Hello friends, welcome to the session on compilers. In this session, we'll be discussing about shift reduce parser. In this session, we will see what we mean by parser, what are the different types of parser, and also we will see the algorithm, how shift reduce parser works. Friends, as you know, that you are viewing this session on my YouTube channel, Learn with Prakash Kanadek, and subscribe to the channel to see many videos on the subjects of electronics and computer science. So let us start the session with the question, what we mean by parser. We know that compiler is a software in which the input source program is converted into a target program. The second phase of the compilation is being called as a parsing. The parser program is also called as the syntax analyzer. The syntax of the input program can be checked by using the parser program. So whenever we write any program in the high level programming language, then it is necessary to see whether the programmer has obeyed all the grammatical rules or not. So while writing the program, it is necessary to obey the rules so that the program can be correctly compiled. So the grammatical rules can be checked by using the software and this software is being called as the parser or syntax analyzer. So the syntax of the input program or the grammar of the input program can be checked by using the parser program. At the input of the parser, we have a sequence of tokens. That is, the output of the lexical analyzer is connected to the input of the syntax analyzer. And therefore, at the input of the parser, we have a sequence of tokens. And at the output of the parser, there will be a syntax tree, which is called as the abstract syntax tree. Say, for example, in a program, if you write something like this, 437 plus 734, then this input code is being connected to the lexical analyzer called as the lexer. At the output of the lexer, we will, we will generate a sequence of tokens. That is, a token will be generated for the number 437, a token will be generated for the operator plus, and the token will be generated for another number 734. Now, when this sequence of token is connected to the parser, then at the output of the parser, we will generate a abstract syntax tree. That is, we will generate a tree, something like this expression, where we will have some, and where one argument will be 437, another argument will be operator plus, and the third argument will be the number 734. So whenever we write any parser program, then the parser program will make the use of either leftmost derivation or the rightmost derivation. We know that the grammar of the programming language can be described by a context-free grammar. And in the context-free grammar, whenever we have been given an input string, then it is possible to obtain the leftmost derivation or rightmost derivation for the input string. The parser program does the same thing. That is, the parser program will make the use of either leftmost derivation or rightmost derivation. If an error is encountered in the generation of the parse tree, then such error is being called as the syntax error. And we know that every compiler will have an error handler. And this error handler will handle the error that are generated in the syntax analysis. Also, the user will be prompted about the correction of the syntax error and only then the further compilation process will take place with the input source program. Now we will go for the different types of parsers. You will find that there are different types of parsers. Basically, a parser is being classified into two categories. The first category is called as the top-down parser in which we will start from the top and then we will come down. And another category is being called as the bottom of parser in which we will start from the bottom and then we will go to the top. The bottom of parser is also called as shift reduce parser. In top-down parsing, we have the two common types. 
the first type is being called as the recursive descent parser and another type is called as the predictive parser the predictive parser many times is also called as ll parser where ll it will stand for left to right that is the first l will stand for left to right and the second l will stand for the leftmost derivation that is in top down parsing you will find that most of the time what we perform is the leftmost derivation and the scanning of the input string will take place from left to right bottom up parser as i told you they are also called as the shift disk parser there are different types of shift disk parser such as lr parser and operator residence parser in lr parser again this l will stand for left to right and r will stand for the rightmost so in shift disk parsing the rightmost derivation is performed but in the reverse order again there are different types of lr parser such as lr0 slr lalr1 and clr1 so as i told you lr that will stand for uh, left to right with rightmost derivation slr will stand for simple lr parser lalr it will stand for look ahead lr parser and clr it will stand for canonical lr parser so there are different types of lr parsers lr parser is one of the popular parsing technique and then it is being used for many high level languages also you will find that by using lr parser we can cover almost all types of grammars in the bracket whenever we write 0 or 1 then it will indicate the number of look ahead tokens that we need to see before we make any decision in the parsing because most of the time the parser will suffer from the backtracking and therefore in order to avoid the backtracking it is necessary to see one look ahead token another type of the bottom up parser is being called as the operator residence parser and this parser is useful for the operator grammar now we will go for the discussion of the shift reduce parser shift reduce parser as i told you it is a bottom up parser that is in this parsing technique we will start from the bottom that is we will start from the leaf and then we will go in the upward direction to the root so in this parsing technique we will start from the bottom that is leaves and then we will go on constructing the parse tree to the root so if we are able to reach to the root root it means that it is a successful completion of the parsing and if you are not able to reach to the root even after trying all production rules then it is unsuccessful completion of the parsing so in this method the rightmost derivation is to be performed and the rightmost derivation is performed in the reverse order so shift to this parser as shown in this block diagram will contain the input buffer will contain the stack memory it will contain the parsing table also it will have the parsing program and at the output a syntax tree or parse tree is generated so as far as the input buffer is concerned it is used to store the input sequence of tokens the stack will store the different symbols of the grammar the parsing table is a table which will show which action to perform and at the output we will see that the parse tree is being generated so there are basically four operations that are being performed in the shift reduce parser the first operation is being called as the shift operation where the input symbols are moved from the input buffer to the stack so whenever we have certain input symbol then this input symbol can be shifted into the stack by the shift operation in the reduce operation the top of the stack which is normally an handle is to be reduced by using the appropriate production rule so the symbols from the stack are removed by using certain production and this is being called as the reduce operation now if all the input symbols are exhausted and uh, the stack will contain only the start symbol then in such a case we will announce the successful completion of the parsing that is we will declare 
that the passing is over and the input string belongs to the grammar. But if it is not the case, then the error will be generated and such error is being called as the syntax error. So this parsing program will control overall operations of the shift reduce parser. It will have one pointer to the input buffer and there will be another pointer which will point to the top of the stack. Now let us see in simple words how this uh, shift reduce parsing algorithm works. Now initially the stack will be empty and the stack will contain only a dollar sign. So most of the time we use the dollar sign to indicate the end of the stack. The input buffer will contain the input string or the sequence of token and it will also followed by dollar sign. So dollar sign in the input buffer will also end, will indicate the end of the input buffer. The parsing program will have the two pointers. One will point to the input character, current input character and the another pointer will point to the top of the stack. The parsing program will conserve the parsing table and then accordingly it will perform either a shift action or a reduce action or accept action or an error action. So whenever the parsing table will consult the parsing table and if there is a shift action then the input symbol will be shifted to the stack. If it asks for a reduction then the top of the stack will be reduced by using the production rule. If it is accept, then there is a successful completion of the parsing or an error message will be generated. So in the shift action, the input character is being shifted to the stack. In reduce action, the top of the stack that is handle is reduced by using the production rule. And if the stack contain only a dollar sign followed by the start symbol of the grammar, and the input symbols are all exhausted from the input buffer, then it is a successful completion of the parsing and the message will be displayed. If this is not the case, then in such a case, an error message will be generated by the parsing program at the output. Now, let us see how the shift reduce parsing works with suitable example. Now we will consider a simple context free grammar for the expression. Suppose we have been given a grammar consisting of three production rules where E is defined as E plus E, E is defined as E star E and E is defined as ID. And now suppose our input string is ID1 plus ID2 into ID3. Now we want to check whether this input string belongs to this grammar or not by using the shift reduce parsing. Now, as I told you, initially the stack will consist of a dollar sign and the input buffer will consist of ID1 plus ID2 into ID3 followed by dollar sign. Now, the first action according to the parsing table will be the shift action. Therefore, ID1 will be shifted onto the stack and the remaining symbols will be plus ID2 star ID3 followed by dollar sign. Now, the second action that will be performed by the parsing table will be to reduce the ID by E because top of the stack will contain the handle ID1 and therefore ID will be reduced by the expression E and therefore the stack will now contain $E while the input buffer will remain the same plus ID2 star ID3 followed by dollar sign. Then the next action will be shift action so that the plus symbol will be shifted onto the stack. So the stack contained will be $E with plus sign and the input symbol will have ID2 into ID3 followed by dollar sign. Again, the next action will be shift action so that ID2 will be shifted onto the top of the stack. Now, the content of the stack will be E plus ID2 and now input will contain star symbol ID3 followed by dollar sign. Now, this ID2 will be replaced by the expression E and therefore, we will have in the stack dollar followed by E plus E and then we will have the input star ID3 followed by dollar sign. Then again we will perform the shift action so that the star or multiplication symbol will be shifted to the stack. So we will have in the stack E plus E star and input will, will consist of only ID3. Then again we will perform the shift action and ID3 will be shifted 
to the stack. Further, we will reduce ID3 by E so that we will have E plus E star E. Then we will reduce E star E by E so that we will have E plus E. Then we will reduce E plus E by using this production rule E. And at the same time, you will observe that all the input symbols are exhausted. Therefore, finally, we are able to reach to the position where the stack consists of dollar and the start symbol and the input at the input buffer, we will have only a dollar sign. And therefore, we can say that it is a successful completion of the parsing and therefore the accept action will be performed by the parsing program. That is, we can say that this input string belongs to this grammar and therefore we have got the message of accept. Thank you friends for viewing the session. Hopefully you have understood what we mean by the shift to this parser. And in our later session, we will discuss the different parsers as we have seen in the types of the parsers. Thank you all for viewing the session.